The Seven Kingdoms needs a ruler loved by millions with a powerful army and the right family name. Good luck finding him. Who said anything about him? I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, a man shot to death outside his Winton home. Why the Attorney General is pushing to make cases involving crimes like rape a priority on the judicial calendar. Marco City MP Greg Moss talks about his political future. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Once again to MB12, a well-known family was hit by tragedy last night after a young man was gunned down outside of his home off Prince Charles Drive. Police say the victim's body was found in the street next to a self-drive vehicle. Area residents, including St. Anne's MP Hubert Chipman, called the incident shocking. Bonnie Toot reports. Residents of this relatively peaceful community say they are horrified following last night's murder of Sean Neville. When NB12 visited his Woodland Way home this afternoon, relatives asked us to go away, saying they would release a statement at a later date. However, friends of the family could be seen visiting the home bearing fruit baskets. Police say they received reports of gunshots being fired in this area around 8 p.m. Responding officers on making checks found a SD park in the middle of the street with a door open. Uh, and upon checking his vehicle, discover a male lying on the outside of the driver's door. Uh, he had what appeared to be some gunshot injuries to the body. According to police reports, officers also found a handgun with several live rounds of ammunition in the victim's possession. As Cuthbert Hills residents looked on from behind crime scene tape, officers searched this gray SD vehicle for evidence. Bonnaby says that vehicle was sprayed with bullets. Uh, the vehicle has some gunshot damages to the front windshield. Uh, so we suspect that the person would approach this vehicle and fire shots into this vehicle hitting to the person. We understand the victim is Sean Neville, the son of a prominent psychiatrist. As news of his murder spread, friends visited his Facebook page to post condolences. St. Anne's MP Hubert Chipman, who lives near the Neville, says he rushed to the murder scene off Prince Charles Drive after learning of the tragic incident. He called the Neville's decent people. I visit their house from time to time, like passing out different information within the constituency. I see him in the food store from time to time, and we have chats all the time. So it appears to be a very nice, decent family. Uh, as for Sean, who was killed last night, I knew him. I spoke to him on several occasions. Seemed to be pretty decent from what I can see. Says he vividly recalls the night when arsonists set several cars in the family's driveway on fire late last year. Back in November, there was a fire uh, in that same yard where four cars were burnt at that time, right? Um, I don't know what the outcome or, of the investigation was. Chipman says residents do not feel safe, noting that in addition to last night's murder, a murder suspect was recently arrested in the area and several robberies and break-ins have been reported. I'm horrified at what's going on because when you really look at it, the Winton area is relatively a quiet area, very quiet, all right? But over the last several months, we have had a lot of armed robberies, not armed robberies, robberies in the house, people breaking into people's cars. I've spoken to the police on several occasions about this. Uh, all the neighbors are concerned, right? Now to have something like this uh, killing in the area, you know, it's time to take stock. Meantime, Bonamy says investigations continue into this latest killing. At this time, it's unclear as to what took place here. Uh, we are appealing to persons, or members of the public who would have seen or heard anything the police gave us a call. Uh, we don't have no idea yet as to who the poisons are, but we'll make inquiries and see if we can find some family members 
who, may be, who can assist us in this investigation. Now, we also spoke with Agriculture Minister V. Alfred Gray, who lives in this area. Gray, who is in Inagua, says he was shocked and saddened to learn of Neville's death, saying he knows his parents very well. Gray says he hopes those responsible are brought to justice and something must be done to tackle this country's crime problem. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonique Tood. Though reports of rape fell by 29% last year, there were still 75 cases according to police statistics. Numbers also show there were 12 reports of attempted rape and 111 reports of unlawful sexual intercourse. With those numbers in mind, Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson said the judiciary is working toward giving priority to rape cases, which can sometimes go years without being heard. Well, what we've done in conversation with the judiciary is ask whether we can see to it that matters that are sexual offenses can be expedited because the likelihood that somebody wants to wait two years even, and that's a significant improvement from 10 years. Two years is a long time when you have been violated in that way. And we need to send a very strong message that we recognize that those are really uh, kinds of offenses that we want to send strong messages about. In some instances, according to Maynard Gibson, rape cases have been in the system for six to ten years before being heard and have a very low likelihood of proceeding to trial past that time. So the strong message is not just in the matter of preparation, but the willingness of the court to hear those matters on an on expeditious basis. Just to let people know that you're not going to get away with it and we will try you quickly. Maynard Gibson said it's cases like these that are contributing to the heavy backlog of criminal cases. We believe that we are on top of the backlog in terms of understanding it and managing it, but we recognize that on a regular basis we have to continue to cull and decrease it, and there are many ways of decreasing. We have to speak to, to witnesses and, and uh, complainants and, just, and determine from them whether they wish to proceed. There are some matters, in, uh, for example, rapes that have been in the system for six to 10 years, the likelihood that that virtual complainant wishes to co proceed is likely zero. Well, despite questions about his future in the Progressive Liberal Party, outspoken Marco City MP Greg Moss maintains that the party's stated philosophy is in line with his own. However, Moss asserted that what the PLP is doing has nothing to do with the party's philosophy and very little to do with the interest of the Bahamian people. Here again is Vonique Toot. In just under three years, the governing Progressive Liberal Party has faced harsh criticism from some of its own. When a prime minister and minister of finance could take an, a debate as important and critical to the pockets and wallets of the Bahamian people, a debate as critical as that, when he could spend most of his contribution threatening members on this side, it's evidence that we need new leadership. Bring the VAT debate to this house and let's talk about that. I've made it very clear I'm going to vote against it. I'm not going to absent myself from the House. I'm going to stand here and vote against it because it's a bad law in the way it's presently framed. For that reason, FNM MP Edison Key, who left the PLP under the previous Christie administration, says young PLP MPs like Dr. Andre Rollins and Greg Moss are now on the outside of that party looking in. I think their time has expired. They have no no reason or way to go come back now they're on the outside looking in now i don't know if they realize it they still speak as though they with the government but they got another thing coming they, they, they don't they're not respected anymore <clears throat> because of their stand for what they believe was right Ma says while others have attempted to sway public opinion against his views, his philosophy is in line with the PLPs. However, he says there have been instances when the party's stance on certain issues has conflicted with its own mandate. Clearly I have some, some views that what the party is doing has nothing whatsoever to do with its philosophy and very little to do with the interests of the people. And so in terms of whether or not I see myself as aligning with the state of philosophy of the PLP, very much so. I think I'm one of the most aligned persons with that. Whether I see myself aligning with what people perceive that I should be doing, that is of no consequence to me whatsoever. When pressed on whether he thinks he has a future in the PLP, Ma said the idea of a political career bothers him and even seemed to take a jab at Prime Minister Perry Christie, who often boasts about his 40-year career in frontline politics. 
And when you hear people start talking about political careers, they're confusing the two. And what they're essentially doing is juxtaposing the idea of what do I do on a national level to feed my family? Um, that's why I keep those two very separate. Um, and so from my perspective, when people talk about your political career or my political career, I, I think my only response to that is this. My political career is to do whatever I need to do to help to advance the interests of this country. Moss, who slammed government's decision to implement value-added tax and has even threatened to campaign against two of the constitutional amendment bills, says he believes one should speak their convictions. Edison Key says it is those convictions that have caused some young PLP MPs to be ostracized by their party. These young people, what happens to them, they, they have no say. They, they come up with the, their ideas and they, they're criticized and ostracized and everything else because they have ideas. They're young people, they're educated, doctors, lawyers, whatever, and they have a right to speak. The people gave them that mandate when they went to ask their for support in the general election in 2012, and they have a right to speak. It doesn't have to be a yes or boss parliament doesn't make any sense. As he seeks to advance his positions, which he feels are in the country's best interest, Ma says he will remember advice given to him by the former prime minister. Hubert Ingram said what I think is the most um, important and lasting statement about politics, and, and it was that there are no friends in politics. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonik Toot. Well, opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis is putting the Christie administration on blast amid speculation that the constitutional referendum on gender equality could be delayed yet again. Though Prime Minister Perry Christie has said he does not want to delay the gender vote for the fifth time, Constitutional Commission Chairman Sean McQueenie told the Tribune recently he doubts it will be held by June of this year. Well, Minnis says when government gives a date, it needs to stick with it. But this government cannot do anything on time. They, they're a government of promises, what they think the public want to hear. So they are very reactionary. The people want concrete things. When you give a date, then live by the date or show why it has to be delayed. But everything they're doing, it's delayed, delayed, delayed. We Christie has said that he wants unanimity on this issue to ensure the referendum is successful. However, Minna says that's a cop-out. I had told them initially that two of my members have problems and what their issues were. But they don't need us. They can pass that bill, they can pass the referendum without the FNM. The FNM don't need to be in Parliament at all that day. They have the numbers. But when you have problems in your own house, if your own house have issues with the referendum, how could you go out and sell it to the people? How could you sell it to the people? That's their issue. It's not us. If a husband and wife cannot get along in a home, how can they go outside and speak with one voice? The Killarney MP says the Christie administration would not be in this predicament today if the PLP hadn't campaigned against the constitutional referendum held under the Ingram administration in 2002. We would not have even been in this problem with the referendum had they stuck to their guns in 2002. They voted for it and then walked out the house and say, oh, we changed our mind. It's a no. But we should not have been surprised. It Stay with us when MB12 returns. The Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda tours the medical pavilion as it prepares to expand to that island nation. We'll tell you about that and other stories when MB12 Weekend comes right back.